Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight on a extremely expensive, rare, hard to find artisanal fragrance from the house of Agar Aura. So this is Taha's house. Um, and the fragrance is called Kinam Urjwani. Kinam Urjwani. So this these little couple drops of juice right here, and I've worn this to bed now three times, so this is the third time I've had a chance to wear this to bed. I am smitten with this fragrance. Absolutely amazing. We're continuing the Kinam uh, kick. Sometimes I get on a kick where I just really like to talk about a certain house or a certain fragrance type, and today was definitely the day for Kinam because I wore as my scent of the day, I think one of, to me, to my nose, one of the most perfect and realistic um Kinam fragrances that money can buy, and it's called The History of Kinam Oud. This is an actual Indonesian Oud uh, cap right here. Russian Adam always goes above and beyond with the presentation, and I did a video on this. I did a review on this today, and so I've had a chance to wear this probably two or three times now as my scent of the day, and um, so it was, um, it was uh, good to finally do a full review of this. And it's really grown on me. The more I wear it, the more I, I appreciate it. And I've worn it to bed multiple times as well. But this fell in my lap. And I have to give a special thank you to my good friend, Hari, who sends me these amazing samples of stuff that I just would never be able to get my nose on otherwise. Um, this is $1,275 for 20 mills 20 mills um just to give you an example of how expensive kinam is uh and i think russian adam's fragrance that uh, we talked about today was um 22 mills for 850 dollars this is 1275 dollars so definitely you've got to come with the with with some serious bread to play in the kinam oud space and i won't go into super detail about kinam oud uh, if you want a little bit more of a backstory, I'll urge you to go watch three videos, either the one from earlier today, um, where we talked about the history of Kinam Oud, the one where we talked about Ensar's Jungle Kinam, or also there was a Kinam fragrance from the house of Agar Aura called Kemmer Kinam, which I actually really appreciated that one as well. So you can go check out those videos if you want more Kinam discussions. But just in a nutshell, in case somebody wanders into this fra fragrance video and they have no clue what Kinam is, kind of like I did, because whenever I started going down the Oud path originally, you read all of these different Oud names and they're all weird, you know? You see Oud Zen, you see Tiger Lust, you see Tiger Wood, you see Tiger uh, Sumatra 1990, you see all of these weird different names, Oud Sultani, Oud Mustafa, right? And so I thought, Kinam Oud, or Oud Kinam, or whatever people were calling it, was just one of those crazy names. I had no idea. I uh, had no clue that it was a specific type of Oud. And um, so there is some, I would say, disagreement in the community. You know, some people think true Kinam can only come from an old cent centennial grandmother tree, you know, that uh, is in the wild and all of this stuff. And there's differences between wild Kinam, and now there's plantation Kinam as well. Um, it, the thought process is that kinam is formed in the heartwood of a tree. And so um, only a small amount of oud trees create kinam in a nutshell is basically what it comes down to. And to make it more even, just real quick as a brief overview, to make it even more confusing, there's different types of kinam. So there's purple kinam, there's white kinam, there's green kinam, there's black kinam. And um, kinam as a scent profile is sort of completely the opposite of what you expect most oud scent profiles to be. If you know just general oud, the fermented animalic oud that uh, is associated with Indian oud or that generic sort of oud smell that the oiling houses have come up with for things like Tom Ford's oud wood, Versace Pour Homme Oud Noir, that kind of thing, uh, Kinam is the exact opposite of that. If there was a diametrically opposed oud to that, what we talked about right there, it would be Kinam. Because Kinam is soft, it's fluffy, it's slightly minty sometimes, it's slightly creamy and milky and, and um, very uh, tranquil. It's a tranquil scent. It's a scent that really just kind of you let your guard down, 
you relax, you sort of let yourself go and just and almost drift away into a dream or a memory. You know, it's one of those fragrances I love putting on at night, right? So it's almost 11 o'clock at night here in Texas. After this review, I'm going to go do some reading and go to bed. It's perfect for that, right? So while the young bucks are out at the club, I'm doing this. Um, and so it's perfect for sort of a night in or just an introspective night, right? Where even if you're not alone, you just maybe want to be alone with your thoughts, right? That's that's the kind of mood that Kinam puts you in because it's that type of scent profile. It's 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 very detail oriented as well. That's something else that I really have gotten to know with Kinam. So today in the Russian Atom fragrance video, this actually uses two types of Kinam, white Kinam and green Kinam. So it can be slightly bitter. Uh, the white Kinam can be slightly floral and there can also be little touches of vanilla and stuff like that in there. You can go check out my, my full review of um, the history of Kinam Oud. It's actually the only review of it on YouTube that I found. Um, so that's sort of like an exclusive review. And this deserves to be reviewed because this really grew on me. You know, when you put it up against the big animalic hitters like the history of Chinese Oud and the um, history of Indian Oud, it doesn't really stand out as much in a, um, you know, video where I tested all of them at once. I did a live stream blind sniffing them all at once. But when you really get to wear it and immerse yourself in Kinam, it's a completely different experience. So this one... This is a very interesting composition because while I think that Russian Adams, the history of Kinam Oud, does a better job of actually encapsulating the smell of Kinam, just putting Kinam up in a, you know, um, low heat burner and gently burning the Kinam at a very low temperature and just allowing yourself to smell the, um, let's say, Kinam shavings put onto this very low heat burner, right? I think Russian Adams Fragrance does a better job of properly giving you what a Kinam smell would be, right? But this is a more interesting fragrance to me because this actually uses purple Kinam. And purple Kinam is a very unusual Kinam flavor. So it's spicy, it's floral, and this one opens up. I, I did uh, a spray and, and each little drop of this juice is precious, so I'm trying to... Con conserve it. Normally I'd be like, Ch -ch -ch, you know, but here one spray and oh man, I'll tell you what. Uh, so when it, when it first opens up, it opens up slightly, um, charred. Okay. Slightly smoky with a lot of iris. It feels like you're smelling a beautiful, one of the highest quality irises on earth, right? This amazing orris butter. And I will emphasize one thing about Kinam. So if you haven't watched my other videos on Kinam, this is an important facet because um, Kinam can have these heavier, smokier, there's notes in here we're going to talk about like, um, for example, there's a note that reminds me of Disarono, if you know this sort of, uh, you know, cherry liqueur like feeling, right? There's a little bit of that in here as well. There's a little bit of this charred note. There's a little bit of leather in here because this is purple Kinam. So it's a little different from the bitter green, minty um, sort of uh, floral aspect from the green and the white Kinam, which we talked about in Russian Adams Kinam, History of Kinam Oud. Uh, and so purple Kinam leads more to some of the heavier notes like the leather, the liqueurs, the cola-like vibe. There's this Dr. Pepper vibe that I get in here and I have the perfect image. I'm going to show you here once we get once we get to it. I just happen to have it in my freezer. The absolute perfect image for uh, Kinam Urjwani, according to me. Excuse me. So I just have to re-emphasize something, though. When it comes to Kinam fragrances, um, one thing that you have to remember is that when you get these heavier notes, okay, so whenever these heavier notes come to you, it's almost like you're seeing it through a transparent membrane, all right? It's almost like the heavier notes I'm mentioning, the smoke, the leather, the cola, the... Um, cherry liqueur, uh, they feel almost like they're transparent and you can walk right through them because Kinam fragrances are detail oriented, meaning you can go in there and you can pick out the tiniest little minty, powdery, vanillic, gooey, resinous side of things. That's the way it's actually described on uh, Sealed Essence's website when they're describing Kinam Urjwani. They say that it's spicy floral with uh, soporific cooked milk. Cooked milk. I don't know about the cooked milk part. 
but there is a little bit of a milkiness, a creaminess, a mintiness, a powderiness, a vanillicness, and this resinous gooiness, as they say. Um, and they say a touch of fruit and leather as well with fizzy cola. And that's actually a really good representation. So keep that in mind because every Kinnam fragrance that I've reviewed, even the ones where the perfumers are trying to sort of create a Kinnam accord, because remember, most Kinnam fragrances do not contain real Kinnam. Most of them don't. Even though they'll say Kinnam, they'll use these different types of ouds to try to create this Kinnam accord. That's another thing I forgot to mention that I mentioned in the previous video. And so, um, you know, the ones that I've tried that create that Kinnam accord, but maybe don't use Kinnam, the perfumers did a great job. Um, Taha with Agar Aura, Ensar with Ensar Oud, of course. And, um, you know, they, um, they just did a great job of sort of allowing the details to shine through. So the details that really shine through when it comes to Kinnam Urjwani uh, are, so first of all, um, they said uh, <laughs> cooked milk. I'm just going to take the cereal approach because when I was smelling the fragrance, what actually came to mind is this Honey Nut Cheerios vibe. Or almost, you know what it, you know what cereal actually better encompasses my thought on this? Is here in the United States, there's a uh, brand called Post. And Post actually makes a cereal called Honeycomb. And if you've ever had Honeycomb cereal with milk, okay, uh, that is actually a really good interpretation of what Kinam Urjwani begins to smell like once that sort of charred, smoky, a uh, very high quality irisy oud opening begins to wane and it begins to go into this milky, um, you know, honey nut Cheerios, honeycomb cereal vibe. And remember, these are the details. All of these heavier notes, the membrane, remember, you can go through them, you can pass right through them because uh, Kenom fragrances are very fluffy. And so for $1,275, uh, I don't know if Taha is using real. Kinam in here, but I certainly hope so. That is a steep, steep price to pay, especially for 20 mils. Now, uh, this is an awesome, awesome fragrance. I am loving every second. It's a pleasure and an honor to get to wear this, but um, that is a very, very steep price to pay. And um, so, um, when I, whenever I reviewed the history of Kinam Oud earlier today, I talked a little bit about how there is this fluffy biscuit-like smell. Imagine warm bread being baked, right, at a bakery. And then just imagine it rising, right? Imagine the yeast in the bread rising. And here, it feels like that honeyed cereal vibe almost turns into this Dr. Pepper float. Have you ever heard of a root beer float? Let me tell you what came to my mind as this fragrance begins to dry down. I get it every single time, and it's the perfect picture and it's only because I just happen to have this in my freezer that I can show this to you. But there is a ice cream joint here in Texas. Uh, and I think they're actually a Texas company called Bluebell. And um, Bluebell makes this. This is a new flavor, as you can see. But it is called Dr. Pepper Float. So a, a, a float, for those of you who are not aware, is basically whenever you put like vanilla ice cream in a glass and then pour soda on top of it. Okay, I think most people know, but maybe there's someone out there that doesn't know what a float is if you're watching from a different part of the world or whatever it is. Um, so usually the way I always did floats growing up was a root beer float. So you would do like A&W root beer, Barks root beer, or something like that, right? Dr. Pepper float, this is like a new, this is like a Texas thing. The Texans love their Dr. Pepper, right? Um, but Dr. Pepper has these... Um, uh, different facets of it that root beer doesn't. So it has little caramel aspects. It has a cherry aspect to it. It has a clove aspect. It has a nutmeg aspect. It has a blackberry aspect, this fruitiness. There's a little bit of fruitiness in here as well. And it has this, um, it does have a little bit of a root beer aspect as well. It has a little bit of a rum aspect. And to my nose, it has a little bit of this almondy, amaretto, cherry liqueur, which is where the DiSarono sort of comes in. Um, and just imagine taking this uh, liqueur. Oh, it's so, per it's so perfect for what this smells like. Like sometimes I can get specific 
right? Sometimes I can have some weird sort of, hey, try to imagine this. Very rarely can I get this specific. I mean, my brain went, bam, uh, this is what this smells like to me. So just imagine the, the, the milk in the bowl of cereal slowly turning into this um, ice cream, okay? Like, just imagine, uh, have you ever seen, um, so growing up, my father's best friend owned a farm in Oklahoma, and when his mother was still alive, his mother lived to be in her 90s, and, and she was of the old school, you know, so she died... I don't remember, 15, 20 years ago, and she was in her 90s by then, right? So she was old school. So when I was a kid, just imagine she was in her 70s and 80s and um, old school style, okay? So I remember she had one of those handheld butter churns, those those um, where they would handheld make the, the, the butter by hand. And if you've ever seen someone like do do one of those handheld, um, those, those butter, handheld uh, butter makers, and you know how manual of a process it is, right? So just imagine somebody's like, oh man, I'm gonna get blisters all over my hands. Can you give me some gloves? And they're like, sure, here's some gloves. And you realize the gloves that they threw you are not some Tom, Dick, Harry gloves from, from uh, Walmart for $10 that were made in China. These were like full grain leather gloves that maybe have been around forever because full grain leather lasts forever. And um, you know, they looks like they were made with some quality if, if these just had like an Hermes print on them, they would be $1,000 gloves, right? That style of gloves. And you put your hand in there and it's almost like the leather mixes with, excuse me, with your skin. So you don't get blisters on your hand while you're churning the butter. You take the gloves off and you realize that, you know, the, the glove has left a little bit of its smell on your hand, right? And so just imagine that leather smell. And imagine mixing that with, the milkiness, the creaminess, the fluffy, buttery, biscuity, bready, minty, slightly minty, um, with that cherried Dr. Pepper liqueur ice cream float. Absolutely perfect representation. The I couldn't do any better, honestly, if I tried. If I didn't know Dr. Pepper float existed, I wouldn't be able to describe this like this. It, it was only by the grace of God. I probably bought this within the last month. This is like a brand new thing. Uh, and it's damn good, by the way. My daughter loves this stuff. Uh, and so, um, it, it, just imagine that. Imagine that smell in an oud fragrance, right? A, a $1,250 oud fragrance. And um, don't forget the soda part, because the soda actually plays a big part in this. So imagine, you know, whenever you pour the Dr. Pepper, right? Um, that you get the fizziness and, and, the, and the bubbliness and sort of the effervescent hit of soda being poured. And, you know, just a little bit, the creaminess adds just the tiniest bit of sweetness. And then the leather starts turning heavier and heavier as the fragrance dries. And that leatheriness is just, man, that purple kinam. It, it, it's like... You know, I can't describe it. It's like a purple goo. It's like a purple um, leathery goo. And it's so damn good. It's such an addictive fragrance. I don't think this is as close to true Kinam smell as what I had got to know from Russian Adams, the history of Kinam Oud. But as a composition, this is so damn interesting. Like, I am really digging this and and this is a i think this is a new fragrance from this year or last year i think this is maybe 2022 i can't remember exactly um but i'll tell you what the um i'll tell you how they describe it on sealed essence so it says it might sound like a lot of seemingly incongruent notes so they're basically saying all these notes coming together may sound like it doesn't work but they all come together to produce a highly addictive, bordering on the narcotic aroma. And when they say narcotic, for me, it's not like you're actually addicted to it, but you want to keep smelling this because it's so, um, for an oud lover, this is something extremely unique and different. Uh, and I've smelled now, I'm not saying I'm an expert, I'm definitely not a Kinam expert. But I've smelled some rare and expensive Kinoms now, having the channel for a couple years. And I can tell you that this is one of the most unique. And because it has that 
Cola. I love Cola by. It's one of the reasons why I love Creation E by Roja, even though it's so sweet. Um, and I wish the heliotrope and, and, you know, vanillic tones were turned down. But man, when you first spray that hit of cola hits you, it's so damn good. With the cognac, I just, I love that smell. And you get some of that here, but even more in a natural, high, high class way. Sometimes the Roja can turn very sweet and stuff like that. Um, but this one, man... Um, if you like that cola vibe, this is one to definitely try. Very narcotic, as they say. So then they go on and they say, if you've smelled our oud oil, Kentanangian, Kentanangian, excuse me, uh, you will have an idea. But unlike Kentanangian, which had, was distilled from agar wood harvested in the Indonesian island of Sumbawa, Kinam Erjwani was made with agar wood from a jungle in Cambodia. In the province of Kampong Som, the first oud oil in the world from this jungle. I have no clue. No, that's that's way over my head. Um, it says a select few Agar Ora patrons got to smell the oil song of Som. Without exception, all were amazed, but the remaining oil was all used in reformulating this, Kinam Erjwani. Purple Kinam is arguably the most perfumey of all Kinams. Kinam Erjwani captures the scent of gently heated purple Kinam, with just a hint of high temperature singed kinam, which brings out the buried leather facet. I definitely get the buried leather facet. I mentioned black berries earlier. Definitely a little bit of this blackberry leathery smell. The opening hits you with a blast of ting tingly spicy floral notes. I got, like I said, um, that smoky charred iris vibe. Um, very similar to our kinam atar, White Kinam also happens to be one of the more floral varieties of Kinam. We talked about that in the Russian Atom Review. Um, as the high octane opening starts to settle a bit, that's when things start to get interesting. There's the unusual minty, bitter, sweet tango. And there is. There's definitely this unusual minty, sweet tango uh, mixed with the unmistakable signature of all Kinams. But here, a violet-hued floral notes start to bloom. Heady and strawberry-like freesia but not as cloyingly sweet. So in, in Russian Adams, it was mimosa. Mimosa, here they're saying it's a freesia-like smell. Powdery, like orris butter, definitely get that. Herbaceous, like lavender or geranium, but less herbal, more honeyed, and decidedly more purple. I definitely get the honeyed aspect. Imagine a purple honey. Um, lovers of ultra, ultra high-end oud already know what this note is. There is no way to describe it except as a twangy purple flower from another planet with a fizzy yet dark cola backdrop. Exuding the under understated class and elegance of our Kinam series Solaflora Parfums, Kinam Erjwani happens to be the most complex of them all. So despite the sophisticated minimalism of the aura, the captivating over overtones give it an allure that will turn heads and keep your nose glued to your wrist and your mind blissed out. That's basically how they describe it. So um, that is my sort of um, just quick hit video on uh, Kinam Erjwani. I mean, a fragrance that uh, wasn't even on my radar. Didn't even know about it. I mean, I knew there was a Kinam series by uh, Agar Aura. But... Um, I, I had no clue that uh, this was one of them. I didn't know how many there were. I only smelled Kemmer Kinam. So this just says it's a Cambodian type of um, uh, oud that they used. How much Kinam did they use versus other types of oud? I honestly have no idea. Um, but apparently this is an exclusive fragrance for Sealed Essence. So you have to go to SealedEssence.com if you want to buy this one. Uh, it's an exclusive that they made just for Sealed Essence. So, um, very interesting. Very lucky to get to sniff this. Again, thank you, Hari, for being so generous with this. I know one mil of this stuff is like $69, and I think you sent me a couple mils. So, uh, thank you, my friend. Very, very kind of you. And uh, I hope you guys appreciate today's sort of deep dive on Kinam. Hope you understand it a little bit better. I know I definitely do. I enjoy doing these videos, even though... I know some people are like, man, you do these videos on these impossible to find fragrances. You're killing me. Do what I do. Put it on the wish list. There's so many fragrances I have on my wish list. You wouldn't believe it. Like if you go to Parfumo right now and go to my uh, wish list, 
there are 725 wish list fragrances that I have. No way I'm going to get to smell. And some of these, of course, I, I've never smelled. I would love to smell, but I've never smelled. Um, and they're on, they're on the wish list. They're there. You know, if I, if I stumble across them, um, it's something to sort of keep in mind. And some of them are weird little one-offs. Like for example, you guys know, I love crazy Kritzia. I've got the Eau de Toilette and I got the Eau de Parfum. Did you know there's an X-ray? There's a pure parfum of crazy Kritzia. Never seen it, never come across it, but apparently there is. So that's on the wish list. So I'll do stuff like that. I'll put these rare hard to find, or just like some fragrances that come out and you never get a chance to smell it, like Roja's Manhattan. I'd love to smell Manhattan one day, never have. Um, you know, stuff like that. I put it on the wish list. Uh, and that's another one that's like $700 fragrance. Um, and so I put it on the wish list or discontinued fragrances like uh, Revlon Pour Homme. Never smelled that one. There's a oh, there's an Eau de Toilette Haute concentration of that fragrance as well. It's on the wish list. Um, 1984 by Insar. It's on the wish list. Stuff like that. So put it on the wish list and you never know when you'll stumble across it. You know, just keep, keep kind of one eye peeled. So, um, but my contacts are getting dry. I'm getting tired. It's past 11 o'clock. It's 11 17 here in Texas. So it is my bedtime. I hope you guys appreciated the Kenom review reviews tonight. Um, I've enjoyed getting to know them. So thanks for watching. Do leave a comment. Love the interaction with you guys. Cheers. And I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Bye guys.